Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, Rights of Persons During an Investigation Article 55 Rights of Persons During an Investigation 1. In respect of an investigation under this statute, a person a. Shall not be compelled to incriminate himself or herself or to confess guilt, b. Shall not be subjected to any form of coercion, duress or threat to torture or to any other form of cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, c. Shall, if questioned in a language other than a language the person fully understands and speaks, have, free of any cost, the assistance of a competent interpreter and such translations as are necessary to meet the requirements of fairness, and d. Shall not be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention and shall not be deprived of his or her liberty except on such grounds and in accordance with such procedures as are established in this statute. 2. Where there are grounds to believe that a person has committed a crime within the jurisdiction of the court and that person is about to be questioned either by the prosecutor or by national authorities pursuant to a request made under Part 9. That person shall also have the following rights of which he or she shall be informed prior to being questioned. A. To be informed, prior to being questioned, that there are grounds to believe that he or she has committed a crime within the jurisdiction of the court. B. To remain silent, without such silence being a consideration in the determination of guilt or innocence. C. To have legal assistance of the person's choosing, or, if the person does not have legal assistance, to have legal assistance assigned to him or her. In any case where the interests of justice so require, and without payment by the person in any such case if the person does not have sufficient means to pay for it, and d. To be questioned in the presence of counsel unless the person has voluntarily waived his or her right to counsel. Article 56. Role of the pretrial chamber in relation to a unique investigative opportunity. 1. A. Where the prosecutor considers an investigation to present a unique opportunity to take testimony or a statement from a witness or to examine, collect or test evidence, which may not be available subsequently for the purposes of a trial, the prosecutor shall so inform the pretrial chamber. B. In that case, the pretrial chamber may, upon request of the prosecutor, Take such measures as may be necessary to ensure the efficiency and integrity of the proceedings and, in particular, to protect the rights of the defense. c. Unless the pretrial chamber orders otherwise, the prosecutor shall provide the relevant information to the person who has been arrested or appeared in response to a summons in connection with the investigation referred to in subparagraph a. In order that he or she may be heard on the matter. 2. The measures referred to in paragraph 1, b, may include a. Making recommendations or orders regarding procedures to be followed, b. Directing that a record be made of the proceedings, c. Appointing an expert to assist, d. Authorizing counsel for a person who has been arrested or appeared before the court in response to a summons to participate or where there has not yet been such an arrest or appearance or counsel has not been designated. Appointing another counsel to attend and represent the interests of the defense, e. Naming one of its members or, if necessary, another available judge of the pretrial or trial division to observe and make recommendations or orders regarding the collection and preservation of evidence and the questioning of persons, f. Taking such other action as may be necessary to collect or preserve evidence. Where the prosecutor has not sought measures pursuant to this article, but the pretrial chamber considers that such measures are required to preserve evidence that it deems would be essential for the defense at trial. It shall consult with the prosecutor as to whether there is good reason for the prosecutor's failure to request the measures. If upon consultation, the pretrial chamber concludes that the prosecutor's failure to request such measures is unjustified, the pretrial chamber may take such measures on its own initiative. b. A decision of the pretrial chamber to act on its own initiative under this paragraph may be appealed by the prosecutor. The appeal shall be heard on an expedited basis. 
4. The admissibility of evidence preserved or collected for trial pursuant to this article, or the record thereof, shall be governed at trial by Article 69 and given such weight as determined by the trial chamber.